All right, today we are reviewing for the Chapter 3 test, uh, mostly on slope and a few uh, arithmetic or arithmetic sequences. Now, the first thing we're going to do is find the slope counting the rise of the run. We're just going to use a counting method for this. First thing I ask us for is the points. So using our graph, we use, we go to the right one, and we go up. So our first point is 1, 1. All right, our next point, we will go down one, two, to the left one, two, so that point is negative two from down, negative two from the left. All right, using our slope, we count from point to point. So we go rise of one, two, three, run of one, two, three. So that would be a slope of three, slope of three. Both of those are positive since we went up into the right. That can be reduced to 1 over 1 or simply 1. All right, the second problem. We identify our points. Our first point is at 1, negative 2. Our second point is at 3, 2. All right, knowing this, uh, we could use our slope formula. What our direction say using simply count. So we have a rise of one, two, three, four, and a run of one, two. So a rise of four, run of two, reduces to two over one, or one. I'm sorry, reduces to two. Our third problem. Our points are negative two. And two. Our second point is zero, three. Again, we simply use the counting method. We have a rise of one, a run of one, two. So it is a rise of one, run of two. I will clear the board. Here. All right, now, continue with the same thing. We have a negative two, negative one point, and we have a zero, three point. Counting our slope, our rise to start with, one, two, three, four. So a rise of four over a run of one, two. Four over two equals two over one equals two. And again, I may have just done that twice, but either way, that is the correct way. All right, the fourth problem we have like this is a zero. And actually on this, if you pay close enough attention, this is two, four, six. So it's actually 0, 4 to this point. And our second point is 2. And that is halfway in between, so that's going to be 2, 1. Now this makes it a little bit more difficult to do rise over run, but not, not too difficult to do. All right, our slope, we know it's going to be negative because it is going down and to the left. Okay. We start at 4, and we go down 2, 3. Go to the right two. Negative three over two is our slope. Alright, the next section, which we are right here at this point, directions determine the following are arithmetic sequences, right? Yes or no line. If yes, what are the next three terms in the sequence? Now, if you remember arithmetic, it is counting or it is increasing or decreasing by a set number. So there's no multiplication, there's no division. You look at these, how do you get from one to three? You add two. How do you get from three to five? You add two. So this would be arithmetic because we are simply adding two every time. So our next number would be 11, 13, and 15. Okay. Number two, we add four. To get from two to six, we add two. Then we add four, then we add four, then we add six. 
this is not adding and subtracting by the same amount, so it is not an arithmetic sequence. All right, and number three. To get from three to 10, we add seven. We add seven again, seven. We continue to add seven every time. So 31 plus seven gives us 38. 38 plus seven gives us 45. 45 plus seven gives us 52, and it is a sequence. All right, our next section tells us to graph the equations by making a table. So we're going to create a table. Again, we know these are linear equations because that is what we're working on in this chapter. So we don't need quite as many points. I'm going to use my x and my y. I will use negative 1, 0, and 1. Now, I need to get one of these variables by themselves, either the x or the y. I'm going to get the y so I can put it in slope intercept form. So I have 3x minus 2y equals 8. I will subtract my 3x from each side. Now I cannot subtract 8 and 3x because they're not like terms. So I wind up with negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 8. I still don't have my y by itself, so I'm going to divide by a negative 2. And I wind up with y equals negative 3 over 2 x plus 4. Alright, now they want us to graph these uh, by making a table. So I'm going to take my x value and I will plug it in. So in essence I'm saying f of x, the function of x equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. Now I'm saying f of x, I'm sorry, f of negative 1 equals negative 3 halves times 1 plus 4. That would be the same thing as saying negative 1.5 plus 4, which is going to give me 2.5. So my first point that I would put would be 1. using this one right here, 1 and 2.5. So to the right one and up to 2.5. Okay. Now, I'm going to work the same problem. This time, however, I'm going to use f of negative 1. So that will be a positive f of negative 1 equals 5 to the 5. So I will go to my x value is negative 1. So my x value is negative 1. My y value is 5.5. So it will be around this point right here. As you can see, I only had to do these two problems or those two equations to graph. So it made it much, much easier than what you would have originally thought it would be. The next problem simply says x equals 3. So our table would be my x value and my y value. x is 3, y is 0. So I'm going to go to my x and I'm going to put a dot here. Now anytime you have just one variable, you draw a single line at that spot. Now, y equals negative 5. Same thing, we're going to go to negative 5. This time our line will be horizontal because it's the y value. Alright, almost finished. Uh, find the slope and it gives us two points. If it gives us our points then we can use our slope formula. Our slope formula, if you remember, is m equals y2 minus y1 over 
x2 minus x1. So we're going to plug in what we know. 1 minus 3. So remember, these are going to be our 1s, these are going to be our 2s. xy, xy. So, and then our x values are negative 3 minus 4. So we have negative 2 over negative 7, which simplifies into 2 7s. Right, on our next problem, we use the same formula but right here. We have 4, or y2, minus 2, or y1, over 5, minus negative 3. This is a double negative, so we make those positive. So we have 2 over 8, which reduces to 1 over Alright, number nine is find the missing value. Again, we're going to use the slope formula right here. We're going to say two, which is our slope, equals one minus r over negative three minus a negative two. Again, a double negative makes that a positive. So one minus r, sorry, one minus r, not two. over negative 3 plus 2 is 1, which that all equals 2. I multiply by 1 on this side. So we're going to 1 minus r equals 2. Now I will subtract 1 from each side. Negative r equals 1. Divide by negative 1. So r equals and now if you'll remember our lat for our last two we have standard form. Our review sheet gives us our standard form equation that we should have memorized at this point. Um, I'm going to use this blank space here to work these problems uh, just so I'll have more room. Now ax plus by equals c. So that means we need to get our x and our y both on the left side our variables and our constants on the right side. So y plus 4 equals negative 1 third times x minus 12. Okay, so for this problem I'm going to distribute for 1 third. So negative 1 third x uh, sorry, plus 4 y plus 4. Now I will add this one third x to each side. Now I want to put this at towards the front, because remember I need the x to be first. Plus y plus 4 equals 4. I'll subtract 4 from each side. And then I will have one third x plus y equals 0. And that is in standard form. The second problem, I have y plus 3, again, this is coming from right here, equals 3 times x plus 5. So y plus 3, I distribute this 3, equals 3x plus 15. I want to subtract 3x from each side. Again, I want to put this all the way at the beginning, knowing that I can't combine x's and y's or these because they're not like terms. So negative 3x plus y plus 3 equals 15. From there I will subtract 3. Negative 3x plus y equals 12. And that is the end of our review for chapter 3.